How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Today, we're talking about Jason Dominguez. Of course, everyone has their two cents to throw in with the Jason Dominguez narrative and if he should be called up, where he should start. Now, Ryan and I are kind of on the same page with this one, but there is no ignoring how phenomenal this kid has been during spring training. He has stepped up to the plate figuratively and literally, and just been tremendous. He is just, he's hitting at a really ridiculous rate defensively. He looks smooth and he looks strong. Athleticism is there. Contact is there. The power is on full display, my friends. He has four homers this spring, and every time he gets into the batter's box, you're just waiting for the kid to do something pretty special. I mean, same thing with Anthony Volpe. Yes, he just hit a double that was kind of lost in the sky due to the sun, but it was off a, a pretty good uh, relief pitcher. So, you know, you're looking at some of these top prospects for the Bombers, and yes, they're making a pretty strong case that they should be elevated sooner rather than later. And that's exactly what um, Aaron Boone said about Jason Dominguez. He said he's going to be elevated sooner rather than later. The question is, where is he going to start the 2023 season? So, Ryan, I know you have your take on this. Before we jump into it, how do you do today, my friend? I'm doing great. You know, I think that this is a conversation I never anticipated to have. I was very much like, you know, He's going to go start in double A. There's no question about it. The Yankees aren't going to have any tough question with Jason Dominguez. He'd have to have a remarkable spring just out of his mind. And then the, that's exactly what he's done, right? He's done exactly what you would need to do to make any sort of a conversation um, out of Jason Dominguez potentially being, you know, someone you start out in triple A and you don't really think about it much. Um, you know, I understand that the conversation is around whether he should be at the major league level or not. Um, but I, I think that we can kind of brush that aside as more of like a fantasy, you know, a dream world where the dude goes out there and he's just unbelievable and he gets to be a major leaguer. But I, I think the Yankees want to take it slow based on what the uh, Aaron Boone's comments on um, the whole situation. Uh, it would lead me to believe that the Yankees are not even considering him to start the major league level. They're just but this definitely could speed up his um, his debut at the major league level. Um, I personally always thought that Jason Dominguez was going to be a guy who at the earliest came up in 2024, um, and he's put together a spring training that makes you say, maybe this kid is ready for AAA. Maybe this kid is ready for, if he starts out in AAA and he performs very well and it's June, he's got like a 130, 140 WRC plus, you go out and you throw this guy at the major league level if you really need it. This is a really talented player. This is a player who's driven up his stock dramatically over the last year and a half. I'm really impressed with him. This is this is not just a matter of, oh, he's going out there, he's getting hits off of guys who suck. You know, these are he's he's facing major leaguers pretty often and he's hitting off of major leaguers pretty often. I've talked about this with Anthony Volpe as well, but you know, Jason Dominguez has hit home runs off of guys who are quality major league pitchers. Again, he crushed a home run off of Connor Brogdon, who is not just a major league pitcher, but a very good major league reliever. I I, I think that you know, that's something that a lot of people are overlooking with Jason Dominguez. He's, he's, and he's also facing guys in AAA who he's crushed. I know he hit another home run off of someone in AAA. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, am I really going to look at this and say that Jason Dominguez doesn't deserve a chance to start out in AAA, that this isn't a conversation? It absolutely is. Do I think he's ready for the major leagues? Absolutely not. I mean, I think there we are a long, long, long way away from that. But he's walking as much as he strikes out. He's only striking out 12.5% of the time. Um, I mean, I mean... Is there really anything else I have to say? Is there really anything else that needs to be said about how good he's been? He has a 608 weighted on base average. For those who are not aware with what weighted on base average is, it factors in your slugging percentage, your on base percentage, all those different things. It, it weighs them properly. It's like a better version of OPS. You scale it the way you scale OBP. So like 400 is elite. 600 is out of this world type good, right? Um, and I get it. It's spring training stats, but he's hitting the ball hard. He's again, not striking out. He doesn't look overmatched. He's hitting the ball hard. There are so... And He's hitting the ball, and he's got power from both sides. So, you know, end of the day, this is a these are really good signs we're seeing from Jason Dominguez, and I'm really excited to see how the Yankees continue how he continues to perform this spring. And quite frankly, I, I think he should be uh, someone that we look at as a um, as a guy for AAA. And that's kind of the conversation I want to have, right? Is he ready for AAA? Now, if you look at his numbers from last year, I know people in the comments listening to this right now are thinking, you know, he only had, what, five games with AA Somerset last year, talking he hit 105 with a 227 OBP, 22 plate appearances, uh, 19 at-bats. It's not enough of a sample size to suggest anything, but whatever the kid did this offseason to get ready for spring training, it freaking worked. You know, he's hitting off AAA guys, he's hitting off Major League guys, and now we're sitting here like... Is he ready for the bigs? Is he ready for the show? And like you said, 
I don't think he's ready for the show just yet because it's a little different going against major league talent on a daily basis, playing in a high uh, pressure environment like Yankee Stadium or if you're in Fenway or if you're anywhere else. Um, that is a lot more difficult than playing in Tampa. No one's really there. No one cares. It's just spring training. Uh, the pressure really isn't on. Um, and that does impact players in their own individual ways. If he's having a tough stretch, can he get out of it? it can is, is his mental fortitude there? There's a lot of variables that we have not seen and do not get introduced during spring training. And that's definitely fair to uh, bring up regarding Anthony Volpe as well. But you can't ignore the numbers. They certainly stand out. Ryan tossed out a couple for you. He's only had 21 at-bats, but the kid's hit nine, uh, has nine hits, eight runs, four homers, nine RBIs. He's in 429 with a 500 OBP and 1.500. OPS. So this is a player who is certainly taking the most, um, making the most of this opportunity and taking advantage of it. So I do think that he could be promoted to AAA. I think he's ready to be facing off against AAA level hitters. I think the sample size of AA was way too small to make any generalizations, to make any conclusions. He was hitting 306 in the 397 OBP in Hudson Valley in A plus ball over 40 games, and they elevated him pretty quick. He was dominating. The guy was unstoppable. AA, you give him a couple weeks, he's going to be unstoppable too. To me, it sounds like he's just motivated. You know, he just is so motivated to prove himself against higher levels of talent that he's just locked in. You know, you're just seeing a Jason Dominguez and an Anthony Volpe who are locked in and trying to make the most of this. So you said we're a far, far uh, long way away from actually seeing Dominguez at the MLB level. I'll ask you this. Is there a is there a good argument to make that if he starts in AAA, we could see him down the stretch in 2023 if we need to supplement any injuries or, you know, mitigate any fatigue? I think there's a, a realistic chance that we could end up seeing him down down the road. Oh, absolutely. Um, a hundred percent. I'm going to, I'm going to point out that, you know, I was looking at this, I was making sure that I was accurate about this because I had kind of hinted at this before that he's been hitting well against good competition. Um, Connor Brogdon's major league pitcher, Ben Bowden's made his major league debut, and then Norwith Gidino has already been in AAA, so those are three guys he's hit home runs off of that are all at levels that he has not played at yet. Um, he can absolutely make it to the major league level in 2023. Would I say that it's the likeliest outcome? No, because, you know, I'm going to say that if he starts out of AAA, it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a struggle. And that, you know, it won't be by July that he'll have AAA conquer. Like, that feels like the likely outcome, that July won't be the time where he figures out all of minor league baseball. And you have to also factor, the Yankees are a World Series team, or they're a team trying to compete for the World Series. So, you know, this isn't like... Um, the Orioles, well, like if you're looking at the Baltimore Orioles, you would say that they would call up one of their top prospects midway through a season because they're not necessarily in a postseason position. Um, and, and they're willing to, you know, take that risk and not acquire a position, a player at that position instead of, um, you know, and, and call up a guy from their minor league system and see what they have in that player. Whereas the Yankees, you know, if let's say I'm looking at a team like the Giants, like Jock Peterson, right? Like the Giants may not be that good this year. They could be good, but it's, it's kind of up in the air. He's on a one-year deal. If he's doing really well, the Giants are doing really poorly and the Giants are looking to trade off pieces at the deadline. Are the Yankees going to say, hey, Jason Dominguez is starting to get a little hot at AAA. Should we call him up or should we trade for Jock Peterson? You're going to say trade for Jock Peterson, right? You know, you're going to say trade for a, a veteran, you know, a qualified, you know, someone who's already done it at the major league level. And then if you need it at, at post deadline, you know, if Bader goes down again, if, you know, uh, God forbid something happens to Judge, if something happens to the guy you acquired, just like last year with Andrew Benintendi, that's the only reason Cabrera became the starting left fielder. Something happened to Andrew Benintendi and so he was forced to start. Um, Aaron Hicks is not only just just a question mark in terms of what it will give you production wise. He's also an injury risk, right? Like last year, he didn't have injury issues, but that's always been an issue for Aaron Hicks in his career. So, you know, it's a good thing for the Yankees to just acquire as much good talent as possible. So I would say that it's less likely just because the Yankees are in a position where they're going to make moves that would benefit their team short term, just as much as it does long term. But I could certainly see a situation where just like how Cabrera came up to kind of be a spark plug or just how Peraza came up to be a spark plug where it's August maybe or even early September and the Yankees are like, hey, you know, we have an injury or this guy isn't performing that well and or we know we're in the middle of a division hunt and we need someone to give us a spark and Jason Dominguez is the guy. I could totally see that. Um, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I think he's played his way uh, into consideration. Again, it's very noteworthy that out of all the top prospects, you know, you look at Chaparro, uh, guys who have performed well like in the upper levels and the minors, Chaparro, Pereira, Randy Vasquez, Johnny Beardo, they've all been reassigned to either AAA or AA. Jason Dominguez has yet to be reassigned. The other two guys that are notable who haven't been reassigned are Volpe and Peraza. Peraza, you expect to be a starting shortstop. And Volpe has a legitimate shot to make the major league team. And again, you mentioned the double. Like he, He's performed more than uh, adequately enough to get a major league spot. 
Dominguez might be a guy they're just trying to get more eyes on so that they can see if he's ready for AAA or not. And that would mean he's someone that you can look at for the major league team at some point this year. Yeah, I mean, look, if he does end up in AAA, it definitely suggests that he could fight his way on to this major league roster, especially if we have injuries popping up or inconsistencies. And for what it's worth, a best case scenario, Ryan, may end up being instead of the Yankees going out and signing or trading for a big name left fielder, Dominguez being ready and just being elevated to play left field for this team. Um, and that way you have Judge and right. You have Bader in center field given he is healthy. And then you don't have to roll with Hicks anymore. You don't have to go out and trade for a left fielder. Instead, you can look at the pitching. Because ultimately, like, the Yankees will be good enough offensively to hit. Like, they, they have the players. If they're healthy, they have the talent and the players to be featuring – um, you know, good offensive performances during the postseason, right? You, if Volpe's called up, and I imagine he will be, you know, you obviously have Stanton, LeMahieu that we didn't have at full strength last year, LeMahieu didn't even play in the playoffs. So if you're looking at what we are probably going to need down the stretch, it's most likely going to be pitching. Carlos Rodon's already suffering a left, a left forearm strain. Carl, uh, Frankie Montas is out for the majority of the year. We don't even know what his impact's going to be. If anything else happens to our starting rotation, we also know Severino's had a lot of injuries, knock on wood, obviously, um, across the years he's had a lot of issues we might need starting pitchers and we may not want to give up the farm for a left fielder we may want to elevate Dominguez give him that opportunity and then go after pitching support instead so that would allow us a little bit more flexibility in terms of uh plugging in uh, you know filling gaps and using our our you know farm capital um, or even starters like Labor Torres to package together to find a starting pitcher or a nice bullpen piece that we might need to utilize down the stretch. Obviously, losing Scott Efros uh, sucks a lot, but we'll have him maybe. Maybe we get him at the end of the year. Who knows? But I think that that's kind of a reasonable take, Ryan. Like uh, As the last thing um, I'll ask you in this episode, do you think it's reasonable to think that maybe Dominguez ends up being like the starting left fielder or they call him up so they don't have to go and trade for a big guy like Brian Reynolds or whoever it might be or maybe even like a, a lower level guy like Austin Meadows? Um, maybe Dominguez is our left fielder down the road. We don't have to trade for someone and we can use that capital to plug a starting spot for the you know rotation or a bullpen piece. Yeah, ideally, you know, as you mentioned, the ideal situation for, for the Yankees is that, you know, all these young guys that they have come up and fill in roles for them at the major league level. Number one, that's cost-controlled talent. Number two, as you mentioned, you don't have to move draft, uh, not draft capital, um, you know, prospect capital to go out and acquire players. And then number three, that means that if you have a hole at a different position, you can kind of go all in there. You know, um, the Yankees are always going to be a team that tries to explore all of their options, and that makes sense. Um, but you kind of look at, like, you know, an example where, and I'm going to throw this out here, and I don't think it's likely, but the Yankees, let's say, have Jason Dominguez figure it out. Um, you know, Volpe and Peraza have secured that middle infield. Um, you don't really have holes anywhere because of your young guys. This is, like, best outcome. Not This is not a realistic outcome. You can now look at a deal or not let's you can like even Volpe let's say Volpe being the, a great shortstop for example and and Dominguez being a really good left fielder let's say that makes Peraza ex expendable perhaps uh, maybe I don't know right like you could be looking at a guy like an Otani do you think the Angels would trade half a year of Shohei Otani for a top 50 prospect absolutely right I I'm not sitting here and saying the Yankees are going to trade for Shohei Otani I'm not sitting here and saying the Yankees are going to make a move like that I'm just saying that you can go out and kind of make that home run move and, and just that like put yourself over the edge move when you feel like, you know, for a guy who's on a rental and you don't have to give so much, you don't even have to trade a Volpe or Dominguez for, but you still have to trade something that hurts you a little bit. You can do things like that when you have a lot of your young guys pan out, right? You know, we've seen this with the Yankees before when Judge came up, when Sanchez came up, when those guys came up, the Yankees were wheeling and dealing that deadline, right? Even this past deadline, the Yankees, have, or the past two deadlines, the Yankees have been able to swing some pretty big trades and not feel affected in the trade deadline, but they have been able to get that top guy, right? Instead of Luis Castillo, they had to settle for Frankie Montas. Understandably so. Volpe was not someone they're going to trade. Um, you know, even in 2021, you know, they, they got Gallo, they got Rizzo, they got, but they couldn't get that like top end starting pitcher you really felt like they might have needed. Um, you know, they could do something like that if you have fewer holes because you can tr concentrate all your uh, resources on that one hole. So the young guys performing well would definitely be the ideal outcome for this team. I, I would prefer to see that. Um, but uh, and the Yankees would tell you that uh, Brian Cashman would even tell you it makes his job a lot easier if those guys perform really well this year. 
Absolutely. But guys, I'd love to hear your perspectives below in the YouTube comments regarding Jason Dominguez. Where do you think he will start in the upcoming season? Always happy to hear your perspectives. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it and turn on the notifications so you don't miss one in the coming days. We've got daily content coming out, highlights, everything you need to keep up to date on this New York Yankees team. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.